In November 2007, Americans were treated to a new shopping experience. Fresh and easy neighbourhood markets, the brainchild of the UK's biggest retailer, Tesco, opened their first six stores in Los Angeles and Orange County, California. Meanwhile, and entirely coincidentally, back in the UK, Professor Michel Lowe was at the beginning of a research fellowship with the Advanced Institute of Management, AIM, to study retail innovation. And the Tesco venture seemed the ideal opportunity. I got involved with the research project, the ESRC-funded project, in the autumn of 2007. Fresh and Easy opened in the autumn of 2007, but it wasn't until the summer of 2008 that I had the opportunity to go out to California to both observe the stores and also to talk to people in the head office of Fresh and Easy in Los Angeles. I have been given complete licence to investigate the firm in whatever way I, I wish to do. The firm haven't made any attempt to edit uh, any of the academic papers that I've produced from the research. Um, and in fact, it's just as a business school professor, a great opportunity to be given the, the ability to enter such a big PLC and really kind of poke around and see what's going on. This is the story of the British professor who studied the innovations of the UK's largest retailer as it entered the world's biggest market. A basic geographical fact about the United States is that it's very, very big. Wide open spaces and a willingness to drive long distances meant that Americans were used to the gigantic Walmart style of supermarket. But something led the Tesco team to think that US consumers were ready for something different. One of the things that the firm were concerned with was the way in which uh, the zeitgeist in the United States, slightly probably behind what's going on in the UK, but was changing. It was changing in relation to things like uh, attitudes to neighbourhood, local shopping, attitudes to preservatives and additives in food, attitudes to global warming and the use of gas, etc. And as a result, the firm was very keen to develop a neighbourhood format. In the context of existing US retailers, that new format was positioned to be as fresh as Whole Foods with the value of Walmart, the convenience of Walgreens and the product range of Trader Joe's. We've been looking in America for a long time and uh, had never seen a reason to go there. But what we noticed across the world was the growth of sort of smaller stores, quality but discount retailing. We're seeing it, we were seeing it in a lot of markets. And we noticed that wasn't happening in the States. So uh, what we decided to do was to go and find out whether that was because it just hadn't been spotted yet, there was something inherent in the retail structure there which meant that it hadn't happened, or whether or not actually maybe it just wasn't relevant to the way people lived their lives in the States. So we've created a very small team and uh, out we went uh, to find out the answer to that question. Having decided on an entry to the West Coast markets, they were very keen to deliver a supermarket that was designed for West Coast consumers. And as a result, they did a very intensive research with consumers, following them around while they did their shopping, uh, looking at them as they did their cooking, talking to them in their homes, looking in their cupboards, examining what was in their fridges, talking to them about food storage, about provision from supermarkets and how they operated on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of their daily or weekly shops. And it was from that intensive research that the Fresh and Easy concept was born. So we designed a store. We literally, on a piece of paper, designed a store and said, well, it will have to be, it will sell food that, that will be that bit better, that bit healthier, that bit less processed. And uh, also it will sell it at prices below what um, a normal supermarket would sell at, significantly below. So we designed a store that could do that, and indeed a business operating model behind it that could do that if we chose to. And then we said, okay, that's good then. So here we have, we've got a store, and it's in your locality. It's, you know, I think we designed it 10,000 square feet, so it was small. It was in your locality. And from it, you can get healthier food, food that's a bit healthier. It will save you money as well. And also, there'll be the sort of key national brands in there, which means you can pretty well get most of your shopping there. 
Because of the sensitive nature of what the Tesco team was up to, the research had to be kept secret. So everything was paid for in cash. No traceable credit cards, and when it came to devising and testing out a store concept, it all got a bit surreal. A mock store was built in a warehouse in Los Angeles. It was stocked with real produce bought at other supermarkets, with huge amounts of cash. So has Fresh and Easy been a success? It's certainly popular with its customers. I think everything is great in the store. That's why I come here. I've been waiting a long time for you guys to open. It was excellent. I love Fresh and Easy. I would say that Fresh and Easy have been incredibly successful in terms of judging the market for a new brand, in terms of researching the market, and in terms of engaging with consumers. At the present time, it's taking a while for the numbers of consumers to build and the like-for-like -like sales, whilst being very good, could grow more than they have done and no doubt will grow more than they have done. Well, I think it's a tremendous success from a customer response point of view. I mean, we are still today getting customer scores that no other retailer gets in the US. So in terms of creating value for customers, it clearly has worked really well. I think if I was being honest looking at it, it's kind of um, probably was overhyped a bit, but is now being underestimated. Quite often as an academic you research things that are already up and running. You go into a firm when it's halfway through its life cycle or something like that. But actually in this case I was able to go in right from the very start and have been able to talk to people right from the, the conception of the whole format through to the present day and that's just been brilliant. For an independent view we turn to Professor John Besant, Director of Research and Entrepreneurship and Innovation at the University of Exeter Business School. From the academic side I think it's extremely interesting methodologically because it's as I mentioned before a longitudinal study and we don't have many of those. I think she's done a great job of negotiating seriously good access with some very senior players who might normally be a little suspicious of academics. So she's done a good job there and therefore acts as a kind of window for us. Um, and I think she's writing some very interesting stuff from a number of standpoints. I also think as uh, someone involved in teaching managers that this is a very interesting case to teach with. Um, it's obviously a well-known company, a successful company, and the question often is, how does Tesco do what it does? Well, we're getting some real insights, and practitioners are getting some real insights from the sharp end and in an evolving story. I think the thing about Michelle, why I find, I think, her doing it useful, is she really wants to understand the business. It's not just some kind of theoretical exercise doesn't feel like an academic exercise in that sense. She really wants to get in and understand it. And uh, it seems to me that she gets the fact that actually in the end, you know, why business exists is because it creates value for people. I suppose what I have felt, found surprising in terms of innovation is the way in which um, the firm are very anticipatory of what's likely to happen. So an analyst put it to me, for example, that this concept, this neighbourhood store concept, this concept of a store for all types of customer, this concept for a store for all types of market, is a very novel and innovative concept. And in some senses it might be just a little way ahead of the curve in terms of consumers or customers catching up with it. And I think that's what's surprising really, that a firm like Tesco is so much ahead of the curve. And of course the question is, will the curve catch up with you at exactly the right moment. My overall concluding statement on this research would be that it's incredibly important in the UK for us to study success and for us to celebrate success and perhaps for us to learn from one of our most successful PLCs. <laughs>